It is the most anticipated day of the year in the Philippines. December 25th, Christmas Day. From the dense urban jungles of Metro Manila to the quiet coastal towns of the Visayas, the entire nation is united in celebration. Families are gathered for Noche Buna leftovers, churches are overflowing for morning mass, and malls are packed with holiday revelers. The air is filled with joy, music, and the spirit of community. But deep beneath the festive surface, a different kind of force is gathering. For centuries, two colossal tectonic plates have been locked in a silent, immense struggle along the Philippine Trench. Pressure has been building, centimeter by centimeter, year after year, ignored by the millions living above them. At 10.14 a.m., amidst the carols and the laughter, the Earth's patience runs out. The silence is shattered not by bells, but by a roar from the deep. A catastrophic magnitude 8.0 megathrust earthquake rips through the archipelago. This is the scenario of a nation's greatest nightmare, the big one, striking at the exact moment of its greatest vulnerability. Today, we explore this terrifying what if, the science, the chaos, and the aftermath of a Christmas catastrophe. To understand the scale of this disaster, we must first understand its source. The Philippines is trapped in one of the most seismically active regions on Earth, a complex collision zone of tectonic plates. The primary engine of this Christmas catastrophe is the Philippine Trench, a deep-sea subduction zone running along the country's eastern coast. Here, the dense Philippine sea plate is being relentlessly forced beneath the Philippine mobile belt. This is not a smooth process. The plates are rough and uneven, and they become locked together due to immense friction. For decades, perhaps even centuries, this locked zone has been accumulating elastic strain energy, like a giant planetary spring being coiled tighter and tighter. In our scenario, a segment of the trench approximately 200 kilometers long, located off the coast of Samar and Leyte, has reached its breaking point. It has been locked for over 500 years, accumulating immense stress. On this Christmas morning, the friction is finally overcome. The fault slips suddenly and violently, releasing centuries of stored energy in a matter of seconds. This is a megathrust event, the same type of mechanism responsible for the largest earthquakes in recorded history, such as the 2011 Tohoku quake in Japan and the 2004 Indian Ocean quake. The rupture begins quietly in the deep ocean but the seismic waves travel outwards at blistering speeds. The primary waves, or P waves, arrive first. A sudden, sharp jolt that serves as a terrifying herald. Seconds later, the destructive secondary waves and surface waves arrive. The shaking is not a brief tremor. It is a violent, rolling and heaving motion that lasts for an excruciating three to four minutes. Across the Visayas and southern Luzon, the impact is immediate and horrific. In churches packed for Christmas Mass, the joyous hymns are replaced by screams of panic. Massive chandeliers sway violently and crash down onto congregations. Stone and concrete facades of centuries-old churches crack and crumble, raining debris onto the terrified crowds below. Stampedes break out as thousands try to flee through narrow exits transforming places of sanctuary into death traps. In homes, Christmas trees topple, ancestral displays shatter, and heavy furniture is tossed across rooms. Families gathered for reunions are thrown to the floor, desperately trying to shield children and the elderly. In the dense urban centers of Cebu and Davao, high-rise buildings sway sickeningly. While modern towers are designed to bend, the sheer duration and intensity of the shaking push them to their limits. Windows shatter, showering streets below with glass. Older, unreinforced concrete buildings begin to pancake, trapping residents within their own homes. Power grids fail instantly, plunging the nation into darkness and silencing the holiday music, replaced only by the sound of crushing concrete and human cries. But the shaking is only the first act of this tragedy. 
the megathrust rupture didn't just shake the ground, it permanently deformed the seafloor. A massive section of the seabed off the eastern coast was thrust upwards by several meters in an instant. This colossal displacement of water creates a series of terrifying ocean waves, a tsunami, within 15 to 20 minutes of the initial quake. The sea along the eastern coast of Samar, Leyte, and eastern Mindanao begins to recede rapidly. A chilling and often misunderstood warning sign. Many, still reeling from the quake and unaware of the danger, might wander onto the exposed seabed out of curiosity. Then, the ocean returns with vengeance. A wall of water, in some places reaching heights of 10 to 15 meters, 30 to 50 feet, slams into the coastline. Coastal communities, already devastated by the shaking, are practically wiped off the map. The wave penetrates kilometers inland, carrying with it a deadly slurry of debris, fishing boats, cars, destroyed homes, and uprooted trees. Beach resorts packed with holiday tourists are inundated without warning. The tsunami surges up rivers, flooding inland towns that believed they were safe from the ocean's reach. The devastation is absolute, compounding the misery of a population already in shock. As Christmas Day draws to a close, the sun sets on a nation utterly transformed. The festive lights are replaced by the flicker of emergency flares and the fires from ruptured gas lines. The sound of carols is replaced by the mournful wail of sirens and the desperate cries of rescue. Workers and survivors searching for their loved ones in the rubble. Hospitals, many damaged themselves, are overwhelmed with thousands of casualties. The injured lie in corridors and makeshift tents in parking lots. Treated by exhausted medical staff, working with limited supplies and no electricity. Major highways and bridges are impassable, severed by landslides or collapse, making the delivery of aid from untouched regions incredibly difficult. Airports and seaports are damaged, further isolating the disaster zones. Communication networks are down, leaving millions unable to contact their families, adding an agonizing layer of uncertainty to the trauma. This what-if scenario is a stark reminder of the fragile reality of living on the ring of fire. It demonstrates that the forces of nature do not respect our human schedules, our holidays, or our times of peace. While we hope such a day never comes, understanding the science and the potential scale of such a disaster is the first crucial step towards preparedness. It is a call to action for individuals to have emergency plans for communities to conduct drills, and for the government to invest in resilient infrastructure and robust early warning systems. Because, in the face of the Earth's immense power, our only defense is knowledge and preparation. If you found this exploration of a potential mega-disaster both sobering and educational, please hit that like button to help spread awareness of these critical geological risks and to ensure you're always informed about the science behind the world's most dramatic scenarios, make sure to subscribe to Bay and Tubi right now. We'll see you in the next deep dive.